hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know my name is deborah and this is the next episode of let's be ffr so if you're ready just keep on watching all right so we have a little new background today um my first episode i was at my window but i wanted to be a little bit more comfortable and chill and loose for this episode because this one is going to be not too crazy because we're not going to dive right in like that but we're definitely going to get into some things so for this um episode we are going to be talking about mental health for those of you who watched my last episode um this whole podcast well this whole vidcast is about mental health but i kind of wanted to get a little bit on the topic strictly of mental health like things that like I believe mental health is like my issues with mental health how I cope with them and things like that um so that's what we're going to be doing in this episode so if you're ready let's go all right so I'm gonna tell y'all a little secret I had a big insecurity today um basically for this video i almost didn't want to record it today because lately i've been having some skin you know irritation like acne my face has been you know flaring up um it's just been acting up you know and for a lot of people especially me you know when acne starts to become an issue you don't feel as confident as you usually would when you have a nice clear face but um i was thinking okay i can put some makeup on today you know put some makeup on and i'll be fine but i'm trying to keep makeup off of my face because i notice every time i do take makeup off even with my putting primer on and stuff like that every time i take makeup off my pimples do get a little bit inflared and i'm not sure if it's from washing the makeup off i'm not sure if it's from how long i keep the makeup on but um i notice every time i take it off my pimples come a little bit and flare like start to flare up a little bit and so i'm trying to keep makeup off for right now i don't really have a reason to wear it for the next couple well for the next week until my birthday my birthday is in one week y'all um but yeah so i'm trying to keep makeup off until then basically but i was like oh i don't like how i look right now like look at my camera now i'm like oh i look so cute but i know like when i watch the clips when i'm editing it i'm definitely gonna have like a lot of you know insecurities that i notice about my face and so i just try to get as cute as i can i did my hair y'all haven't seen my hair out on my channel yet um i haven't seen my hair out in a while though not gonna lie because i have my twist and then before that i mean i've never worn it out like this for a while i haven't worn it out like this for a while but like i've worn my natural hair um but like obviously with the twist and then i used to do, i did straight backs before that but then before that i was doing like protective styles so i haven't seen my hair like out like this for a while but i was like i was a hair model on sunday so I had to take them twists out and they did like different things to my hair and I was like since it's out I might as well you know just wear it out for the next week because February 2nd baby I'm getting my weave 26 inches don't play with her um so yeah I was like I might as well just embrace my natural hair for now um I gotta get used to it but from this angle it looks cute but I know when I watch my clips later I'm gonna be like ugh darn I wish I didn't but no we're gonna embrace the insecurities we're gonna talk about the insecurities and we're gonna make i'm gonna make sure y'all know that it's okay to have them because everybody has insecurities and i feel like one of the things that's important when it comes to insecurities is definitely just embracing them like realizing like whether it's there or not you are a bad bitch okay a bad bitch is you so don't play with her don't play with me don't play with her don't play with y'all so yeah that's all i want to tell y'all because i just know like i'm gonna be kind of like oh i don't want my face in the camera the center so but i'm like i'm just going for it. no makeup i put my earrings on put my necklace on i got a cute little outfit on i'm gonna show y'all all right so i got this metallica shirt right i think i got this from fashion nova and i got these jeans these are from Sheen, I think. I can't really remember, though. These are so cute, though. They're either from Sheen or Fashion Nova. The only things, one thing I can tell y'all, the only thing that I like from Fashion Nova is jeans. 
and some graphic tees. And every so often, I might, like, get a dress if I need a dress for an event or something. But, like, it's rare because I, I don't be finding stuff off Fashion Nova. I don't even think I've... Nope. I haven't gotten anything other than, like, some graphic tees or jeans from Fashion Nova in a while. Because Fashion Nova is starting to plummet, okay? It's not for us skinny girls, I feel like. Like, our, us skinny skinny girls, like, no BBL. Nothing wrong with BBLs. Just saying, like, I feel like Fashion Nova has definitely started to conform to like the bbl community um because all the models on there you know got the bbls clearly so i just feel like their outfits don't really be as cute anymore as they used to um and then one thing that i noticed about i'm so off top i'm supposed to be talking about mental health and i'm saying talking about clothes but before i get into mental health one thing i noticed though is like for me i need to see what the out with the shirt or whatever item of clothing looks like on the model before I buy it and I feel like that's for everybody but I feel like the way when I see it on Fashion Nova models I don't like it so I kind of be like mm, I don't think this is going to look right you know what I'm saying and also they don't do many reviews on Fashion Nova that's why I like Sheen because one thing about Sheen they're going to post their reviews with pictures okay and they're going to tell you straight up ugly or not you know so that's why i like sheen even though their quality of clothes can be a little better but you know you gotta pick your battles so but yeah that's all i get from fashion over some jeans because their jeans are real good and their graphic tees are cute so that was my spiel about that all right so to get into the actual thing that i was supposed to be talking about today mental health for those of you who i'm sure everybody knows what mental health is um i'm gonna actually look up the proper definition of mental health just because i want to see if it's kind of different than what i feel mental health is so let me see all right i got my hand in the ipad y'all know y'all know um, so mental health, the definition, Google definition is a person's condition with regard to their physical, psychological, and emotional well-being. So yeah, this is basically what I define mental health as as well. But like, I feel like it's also, it's more than just that. For me, so for those, okay, so I'm gonna break it down how I feel like mental health is. So mental health is, yeah, what I just read, but also mental comes from mentality and your mentality is basically like kind of how you view things how you see things how you interpret things and so for me i feel like a big part of mental health is that it's not just your psychological or your emotional well-being it's not just like oh i'm feeling down today i'm feeling sad today i'm depressed i'm i got bipolar i you know things like that. it's not just that it's also like say you have a situation that happens right and you can either see it in a positive way or you'll see it in a total negative way or you'll see it in a bad way or a way that is not beneficial to you or in a way that puts you down even further you know what i'm saying so i guess an example let me see hmm. what's a good example okay say you lost a job that you didn't really like anyway and you lost a job so for someone who's in a negative mental health um a negative mental health what's the word in a state of negative of a negative mental health right say you're in a state of negativity you're going to see that as like oh my god i don't have a job now i won't be making money i can't pay for this um I wasn't good enough for the job. I can't keep a job. You're going to see things like that. But if you have a positive mental health perspective, you're going to say, oh, I didn't like this job. It was, now it's time for better opportunities. Oh, I can find a job that fits my schedule better. I can find a job that I'll enjoy. Um, I can get this time a little bit more time to, you know, take a minute to take a break and breathe before um, trying to jump into a new job. Like, oh, yeah, my bills might not. Well, you know, people save money, so you never know. But, you know, people do have struggles. Like, some people are literally paycheck to paycheck. So, oh, my bills may not get, um, all my bills may not get paid, but I know I can find a better opportunity for me. You're going to see stuff in that light when you have a positive mental perspective. But when you're negative mental perspective, it's all going to be negative 
interpretations of what happened or negative perspective or negative um way you see a situation so that's kind of what i'm saying it's like that and it's and the reason i say that is because essentially when you are depressed and down you see things you see everything in a negative perspective everything i mean like you don't find anything positive in anything. You don't find anything happy. You don't find the light in anything. And it's not just, it's not because it's not there. It's just because you can't see it. Your perspective isn't in line with what positive thing could be in front of you, if that makes sense. So that's why I said it's not just the well being of how you feel, it's not just the well being of how you think. It's how you see things how you perceive it how you interpret it things like that and that's why i want to pay attention to that as well because when you can shift that mindset then you can shift your life like when you can shift your mindset into thinking oh well now this is time for finding a new job rather than oh i don't have a job i can't keep a job i don't have money this and that if you can see it like that then you can change your life. You can create better opportunities for yourself. You can create um, better situations for yourself, better relationships, better love for yourself. Like just in general, you can create a lot of positive things for yourself. And I also just see like a lot of people kind of describe a, a mental health struggle as having a diagnosis of depression having a diagnosis of bipolar disorder having a diagnosis of anxiety when it doesn't have to be that sometimes it's just how you think it's just like how you see things it don't mean that you're depressed it don't mean that you're these things it's just sometimes people are sad people see things in a way that's not always going to be beneficial to them because when you hear i lost my job you will think negative that's literally just how it is but if you can realize that's how you think and switch it to positive then you can think oh this is my time to take a break oh this is my time to find something better for myself this is my time to work on something that i actually love and enjoy so that's all i'm saying so that's what i believe mental health is and i think that's what i want to spread to other people as well um don't get me wrong i do have diagnosis of you know things that i stated but not everybody is like that and you don't have to stay like that forever as well and that's another thing that i want to work on so to get into that for those who don't know i am in therapy i think i started well i started therapy about two years ago but i stopped for a long time because i wasn't a fan of my first therapist i felt like she was trying to tell me things that i wanted to hear rather than actually listening to what i was telling her and actually you know um allowing me to reevaluate the reevaluate the things that i was thinking so i kind of feel like she was just there she wasn't really helpful in a way and it's like it is okay to have a helping ear but it's like i mean a listening ear but it's also like your job is to actually help me not just to listen you know what i'm saying and sometimes people like their therapist to just listen that's okay sometimes i go to therapy and i'll chat 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 and she'll just listen and that's okay but as a therapist you need to find one that will actually help you to reevaluate your thinking look at things differently um even tell you you're wrong sometimes and i felt like i wasn't getting that from her i felt like it was too you know one-sided um straight line it wasn't anything it wasn't challenging me to think differently so i would kind of go there and just complain or cry or tell them what's going on but I wouldn't really get the help that I needed from it. So I stopped going to her um, and I took a break from therapy for a long time. I think I want to say at least half a year I stopped going to therapy. And then I started back in, I want to say May. It might have been earlier than that. I want to say it might have been a couple of months earlier than that, but I'm not 100% sure. So I've been there in therapy since then. I haven't been as consistent as I wish to be, but now since I moved and settled down, got my job, started school, I can now actually see how therapy will fit in my schedule. So I will be like more consistent with it every, I think I'm going to do every two weeks. Because sometimes I realize about me, once a week is too much for me. Um, but anything longer than two times, I mean, once every two weeks is too long. I mean, it's too far away. So I like to do once every two weeks. Um, it gives me time to re to evaluate everything 
um, that's went on in that two weeks and to reflect on what I talked about in the last therapy session, things like that. So, yeah, if you ever feel like your therapist is not doing, like, if you ever feel like you're not being challenged in your therapy sessions, then I recommend that that's a sign that you should find a new one, personally, in my opinion. Um, it's not going to be the same for everybody, but that's just my recommendation. If you feel like you're not being challenged, then definitely I think you should find a new therapist. So basically, I wanted to talk about what I was diagnosed with mental, my mental diagnosis, my psychological di psychological diagnosis, whatever you want to call it. Um, so my um, therapist and my nurse practitioner, I think that's what she's called. What is she called? I can't remember what she's called, but the one that actually like can prescribe you the medicine and actually, you know, do the checkups and things like that. Um, can't remember what they're called, but y'all know what I'm talking about. They diagnosed me with depression, which I already figured that. I'm not going to lie. I figured that one. Diagnosed me with PTSD. Um, I wasn't, I didn't know for sure if I had that, but I remember my dad telling me that it sounds like, like, it seems like I definitely have, like, PTSD, um, from just, like, a lot of stuff growing up, and then just what I experienced with relationships, and period. So, like, I remember my dad saying that to me before, that it seemed like I had PTSD. Um, so when she said that, it wasn't that much of a shock to me, but it was good to, like, hear it, like, you know, know that, okay this is what's going on with me, you know, and then also anxiety, um, I knew I had anxiety, 100%, I feel like for the most part, everybody will know they have anxiety before they're actually told they have anxiety, because anxiety is a feeling that is very common, um, and it's a very distinct feeling, like, you know exactly how that shit works, you know, so it's like, you don't need nobody to tell you that you have anxiety, but, you know, like I said, it was good to hear it, um, so basically, the reason that okay so i wanted to tell you this because there is a lot of negative connotations about being diagnosed with things and i feel like it's important to see like to be able to look at it in a different light like in tv or like even in your household like family like they make it seem like oh well you're you shouldn't let people tell you you're diagnosed with this. You shouldn't let people tell you you're this and that. And and then even in TV, it's looked at real like, oh, she's crazy. She's this. She's that. And it's like, to a certain point, I started to feel that way. I started to feel like I was wrong for letting somebody tell me that I'm this, that, and they're like, I was wrong for letting her tell me that I had PTSD and I had anxiety and I was depressed. Like, I felt like it wasn't a good thing to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't feel like it felt like I was kind of like the outcast you know what I'm saying if that makes sense I'll get more into it in a second but but also like also seeing on tv how they make the people seem crazy when they have things like bipolar disorder or depression or anxiety or anything like that or you know PTSD it makes them look crazy or absurd and this that they're like oh she's weird like and it starts to make you feel like that in real life like at a certain point I feel like I'm weird like I felt like I was weird I feel like I was crazy I felt like maybe like I'm sick like I even got to a point where I felt like I was like mentally sick and it's like that's not how you should feel like you should not feel your you should not feel that way about your diagnosis like because that's what really pressures you to feel even worse about the things that you go through so it's like oh well I went through this and that's why I got this but I shouldn't have this so now all these things that I went through wasn't okay. Obviously, it wasn't okay. But all these things I went through wasn't normal. Or all these things that I went through um, isn't... What's the word? It's not... You know, it's not... It's something... Basically, like, all the things that I went through, I should be ashamed of. And it's like, that's how it starts to make you feel. Because when everybody's telling you, oh you got this you got that oh you're crazy you're weird you don't or somebody even telling you you don't have it like oh no you don't have this oh no you're not depressed oh you don't have anxiety it's like bro what do you feel at that point people telling you you don't have it then people telling you, you do have it then people calling you weirder or 
unusual or crazy it's like it's kind of it gets really confusing in your brain and it makes you feel ultimately worse like it makes you feel a lot worse like it makes you truly feel crazy and i remember one point in time a situation with my mom um i literally told her i said i feel like i'm crazy like i feel like i'm sick like i feel like something is genuinely wrong with me and it wasn't even because of fully what i was going through it was also because of like the outside the outside um people just telling me like oh you don't have this oh you do have this oh you're crazy you're weird this time it's like that plays a huge part in your mental health i'm telling you like when you don't have anybody to really support you or you do have people supporting but you also have people who aren't and it's like close people to you who aren't it's kind of like dang this is like confusing it gets to that point so i do want to say anything that i do mention about my family or anything they're not bad people they i love them to death they're still good people it's just i notice in black families and my family it was a lot of um negative connotations around that and to a certain extent i understood where i was coming from but at a certain time when you're telling somebody who is genuinely growing through these things that oh you don't have it oh it's all in your head it doesn't help it doesn't i'm telling you i'm sorry but don't tell somebody who has mental health issues that it's all in your head or or you don't have depression or you don't have ptsd or you don't have this like don't tell somebody that because and i understand to a certain point where they were coming from they were kind of trying to make me look at it as a different way like oh well that's not reality but it's like when you're essentially when you have mental health issues you're kind of stuck in a point of reality and in your head like that's kind of what it is so it's like when someone's telling you those things it starts to get confusing and it starts to mesh and it's kind of like dang like i don't even really have a sense of reality at this point and that's how it feels so one thing i can recommend do not tell somebody who's going through mental health issues that they don't have these things or they um or that it's all in their head or it's not real and stuff like that like don't don't say those things please i'm begging y'all do not do it <laughs> because that actually put me in a worse state because now it makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was basically, so basically, and also, so for me, I personally was glad. I wouldn't say glad because nobody really wants to deal with mental health issues. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody wants to go through that. But I was kind of happy that I was told by like my therapist and stuff like that that these are the things that i'm diagnosed with not because i want to be diagnosed with them but because now i can put a word to a feeling you know what i'm saying i can put a word to a feeling and i can put an experience to a feeling or to my experience and i can understand that it's not all in my head it's real it might be like 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 what's the word like, it's definitely in your head. Like, you obviously deal with issues with your, like, thinking, your mentality, stuff like that. But it's not in your head as a way that it's not there. You know what I'm saying? Like, people will say, oh, that's all in your head as if it's not happening. That's how they say it. And it's like, that's not true. This is happening. This is real life. Um, you got to deal with it. You got to experience it. You got to go through it for you to actually face it and heal from it. So when somebody's telling you it's all in your head, it's not real this time there, that's not helping you. It's not. It's not going to be helpful. It's not going to help you heal. And honestly, I got to a point where I started to stray away from my family because of that. Because even though they were supportive in certain ways, they weren't supportive in the ways that I needed it, if that makes sense. And I'm not telling you to, what's the word? I'm not telling you to enable these these diagnoses i'm not telling you to enable these feelings but i'm telling you to recognize that this is happening to me 
I am going through a lot right now. I am struggling mentally. I have anxiety when I talk to people. I have anxiety when I go up in front of people. I have anxiety when I meet new people. I have anxiety when I go in public. I have these things. I am I'm I am depressed. I am sad. I am I don't want to get up sometimes. I don't want to go out. I don't want to be productive. I don't I don't want to I don't I don't keep my relationships and my friendships together as well as I could. Like, I don't love myself sometimes. I don't, I have so much insecurities. I'm not confident, things like that. Like, I'm depressed. It's a word to a feeling. That's all it is. It's nothing bad. It's nothing bad to label yourself. Because essentially, you are able to put a word to a feeling. Because sometimes you can't describe how you're feeling. I got to a point where I now can describe how I'm feeling, but not everybody can do that yet. So the label is there to help you talk to other people about it. It's there so like when the conversation comes up, I'm depressed. I'm depressed and I need help. I need support. That's all that word is there for. It's not, it's not to make you feel crazy. It's not to make you sick. It's not none of that. It's to put a label to what you're feeling and that's all it is. So don't let your family or your friends or anybody around you tell you, oh, well, you're not this, you're not that. Because you are. If that's how you feel you are, you feel like you need help, speak on it. That's how you feel. That's how you are. And that's okay. So that's personally why I like that I was able to get a second opinion on what I was feeling because I had a feeling that I was depressed. I had a feeling that I had anxiety. Like I I could have diagnosed myself with it, but you know, you always want to like, you know, you want a professional to help you with that sometimes. Because I know there's a lot of discrepancies about self-diagnosis and professional diagnosis and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, your, your first diagnosis is probably going to come from yourself. I can tell you that now. You'll probably diagnose yourself before you even go see a therapist or you see um, a doctor or anything like that. Your first interpretation of this feeling is going to come from you. And getting that label is just to confirm what you are feeling. And it confirms that you're not crazy. It's not to make you more crazy. It's not to make you sound crazy. It's to confirm that this is what you've been feeling for a while now. And I've been telling you this is what I've been feeling for now, a while now. So now I'm giving you the name of what this feeling is. That's all it is. So that was a big struggle that I had in my household. Like, it's all in your head. You're not feeling this. You're making it up. Things like that. And I know they didn't really fully come from a a, 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 a point of hurt or like not hurt a point of trying to hurt me or trying to you know put me down per se but even when I voice sometimes like you telling me this is not helping you telling me it's not okay they still wouldn't really listen about that and it kind of made me feel worse. like, And that's why I started to feel like to a certain point I was crazy. Because you're telling me it's in your head. You're not depressed. You're not feeling this. You're not feeling that. And it's like, so what am I feeling? What is it then? Why do I feel like this? Is it is it really all in my head? Am I crazy? Like that's how people get to that point. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. So labels are okay. Don't stray away from labels. You want to get into a point where you don't actually have to label yourself that anymore. Because now for me, I still definitely say I have these things. But I don't shine so much light on the fact of having them. I more so just shine the light of I was going through a lot. I'm still going through a lot. And now I'm healing. And that's the point that you want to get. You know, you want to get to a point where you can notice, you can recognize, and you can start to move past it. So the labels aren't forever. They're just there for you so that you can understand what you are feeling and what you are going through and help others understand that as well. And that's what I kind of want to educate to people who deal with mental health issues and, or and also families who have people in their family that deal with mental health issues. Because especially in the black community, oh my gosh, it's a lot of just like, oh, we don't do therapy. That's for white people. Therapy is for white people. That's some white people shit. Like, no, it's for everybody, baby, because I'm up in therapy crying my eyes out. I'm up in therapy telling what I'm going through. And I'm getting help, and I'm getting 
and I'm getting a chance to reevaluate my life and reevaluate my situation and you know all all of that and it's been helpful and not just that but a lot of other things which I will get into a little bit in a minute so also so I also wanted to speak on how I personally cope with my mental health um I'm I would say I'm still in a place of I'm not in a place where I can say like you know how everyone knows you're you're gonna be healing for the rest of your life like whatever you go through you will be healing for the rest of your life and so there's a point where you can say though that you feel healed but at the end of the day you're still healing but I'm at a point where I'm like right before that like I know that I'm still dealing with PTSD in relationships. I'm still dealing with PTSD in, in friendships. I'm still dealing with PTSD with men. Um, I'm still dealing with PTSD with growing up with just like, you know, just things that you've went through that when you get a, like a hint of it again later in life, you're kind of like, I don't know how to deal with this. Oh, this is weird. Or you kind of like, it starts to bring back all these emotions and things like that. Like, I'm still at that place where, like, things happen and I'm still like, damn, I can't handle this. Like, I can't handle this. I can't handle being around this person. I can't handle dealing in this situation. I can't handle um, myself. Like, things like that. So I'm still in that place, but I'm definitely better than I used to be. That's one thing I can say. I have grown I've been told I have grown. I have noticed the growth myself. I still have times where, you know, I fall back into that space. But as long as you keep going, you can always, you know, get back to where you were and keep going further and past it and past it and past it. And to a point where you can say like you feel like you've healed from this situation and you've healed from the things that you went through. And like I said, you're always going to be healing because sometimes you'll get that feeling again like, oh, I'm feeling this way again or I'm feeling that way again by the end of the day you can get to a point where you are happy like genuinely happy you're genuinely happy you are genuinely coping correctly with these things you are breaking curses you are breaking um past situations you are you are you know just shifting your life basically so you can get to that point um I when people say that you're always going to be healing it's not like you're always going to be dealing with these things it's not like that it's more so like you're finally coping in a better way you're finally handling things in a better way you're finally reacting to things in a better way you're finally living life in a better way that's really all that is so I would say I'm definitely there I want to share with y'all a couple things that I do that I've been doing to help me get there and that helped me get there and that's helping me go forward and go further with it. So the first thing, therapy. I already talked to y'all about it. I just, you know, so y'all know the gist about that. Therapy is very great. I love it. Honestly, it feels good to know that there's someone you can talk to who literally cannot judge you. And if, say, even say if they're judging you in your head, say that they are, which I very, it's very rare that you'll probably run across a therapist that is actually going to judge you. But like, say that they are judging you in their head. They're not going to make it known. Like, there's no facial expression, no, no sound, no words, no nothing. They're not going to make it known that they're judging you. So you always feel safe, which Honestly, as a therapist, you should not be judging nobody anyway because pe they have that compassion and things like that. If you find the right therapist, my therapist, personally, I love her to death. Oh, I love her. Um, I just know for a fact she's not judging me. Like, I can say that 100%. She's here to help me, for real. Like, it's not about money, none of that. So, I genuinely, I genuinely recommend therapy. Um, I also recommend keep going to different people till you find the right one. Um because finding the right therapist is peak um necessity to feel like you're actually getting help in your sessions if you're not with the right therapist i'm telling you you will not feel like you're getting the help that you need because i've experienced that i felt like this is not right the right therapist for me i just know it and 
when I found this other lady, I was like, this is, this is who I need. This is a good lady for me. This person will help me. This person wants to genuinely help me. She's here for me. She's going to listen to me. She's going to tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong. She's going to, you know, things like that. Like, you need somebody to challenge you, like I said previously. So, yeah, if just keep, I honestly, like, I recommend don't settle for any therapist. Don't just go to any therapist. Find the one that works for you. All right, so the next thing that I do that helps definitely with progressing my mental health is journaling. Journaling is a very important. I'm going to show y'all my journal, actually, because I be having journal prompts in there. I need a journal board, though. That's the thing. I do need a journal board. Okay. All right, so this is my journal. It says noteworthy. You can't really see. But this is all the stuff that I've written. I have all these pages since I got this all these written my last journaling was january 10th so i definitely been slacking with my journaling i'm not gonna lie but this is i'll show y'all the last journal prompt that i did in here so this says journal prompt love language so one of the big things that i struggle with is relationships and it's def it's due to my mental health and things that i experienced and things like that so what I learned actually is what I thought my love language was is actually my trauma. And so a lot of things that I thought I wanted for my significant other to do for me are things that I realized that I only want because I possibly didn't experience in my previous relationships or in my family growing up or things like that. So that's what I realized. And, my, and I realized it's not even things that I actually want. Coda, you want to stop moving? Thank you. Anyways. It's not actual things that I want. It's just things that I think I want because of the trauma built around it. So, with this journal prompt, I wrote down what I actually want from somebody. And, for example, say, so in my last relationship... I felt like I always had to be up under my man. Like, I always felt like I had to be talking to him all the time. I had to be seeing him all the time. Things like that. And when, like, we couldn't see each other, we couldn't talk, it would actually, like, for some reason affect me a lot more than it should have. Like, you should be very, like, independent in your relationship. But I realized I was too dependent. And I thought that's what I wanted. Like, my love language was, like, being up under my man, talking to him all the time, blah, blah. That's not, and I realized that's not what I want at all. What I realized that I want is actually things that he would do. So, he was the type of person, he go about his business, he handle his business, he come back to me and he'll give me all the attention I want or he'll treat me to this or he'll take me out or he'll do this and he'll take care of me, things like that. I would feel like it was a problem because I'm like, well, you're not texting me throughout the day. We're not seeing each other as much as I want to, this, that, and a third. But I'm like, once I got past all that, well, obviously, I'm out of that relationship now because I messed it up. We're not gonna talk about, we'll talk about that in another episode. Um, so, yeah, I fucked up that relationship because of all the trauma that I built around my love language. And so, he would do what I actually wanted it without realizing it's what I wanted, if that makes sense. So, I was thinking while I was in the relationship, that's not what I want. I can't, this is not what I want. I can't accept this. I can't compromise this. And the only reason I was so strongly about strong about it was because I felt like it was what I needed because of the trauma built around that love language. And so after realizing how bad I fucked up that relationship, after realizing realizing how bad I fucked up that relationship, I started to reevaluate my love language and I started to realize like this isn't even the love language that I want or need. This is what I made myself believe I wanted because of the trauma I experienced from other relationships or other men or growing up in my family, things like that. So I began to realize that him going about his business and then like not going about his business, but handling his business and like just focus on himself, like his goal and and putting himself as like a priority and then me being a priority but not the number one priority. That's what I needed because at the end of the day, that's what I would do as well. I put my, I 
at the time I did not put myself as my number one priority because obviously like I felt like I needed to put him as my priority because you know dependency this that and the third um but I would go about my business and he would be fine with it like say like I had to go to work do my thing I was out with my friends or anything like that he was fine with giving me that space to do what I needed and then come back knowing I'm gonna come back to him and give him that attention and give him that love and all that like so things like that and I realized that was the dynamic that I want and that's the dynamic I want to create so um <laughs> it's funny because Every time my dog moves, I look at him, and now he's trying to move quietly. Anyways, so, yeah, that's what I realized that I really needed. And, oh, I'm trying to get my light right. And that's just one example. There was a lot of other things, and that's why I wrote these things down, because when you write stuff down, you get to see it correctly, rather than, just thinking about it in your head. But when you write it down, you get to see it. You get to go back to it. You get to reevaluate it and things like that. So I wrote down what my love language are. Emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally. I wrote down exactly what my love language was in these four categories. And it made me realize that my love language was not what I was... Was not what I was, like, pushing for in my relationship. So journaling is very important to me, I believe, and when it comes to reevaluating your life and reevaluating your choices and your demands and things like that. So definitely recommend journaling. Another thing that I do in my journals is I pray. I like to write down my prayers and then I read them out loud. The reason I like to write them down is because sometimes I like to go back to them and um, read them again because sometimes, you know, you might be dealing with the same thing that you were dealing with when you wrote that prayer down or when you spoke about that prayer and you want that same prayer again. You want to say that same prayer again. So I write down my prayers. It's also good to see it and just, you know, go with what comes to your head. Like literally when I write, it's the same way if I text. When I text, I text how my brain is thinking it. So when I write, I write how my brain is thinking it. And I like to do that because now I can put my brain on paper rather than just, you know, thinking in my head and then letting it disappear, you know. So when I write it down, I can either go back to reflect on that prayer, go back and reread that prayer, and then, you know, evaluate that prayer, um, see how that prayer connects to my life now, things like that. So that's why I think it's very important to write your prayers down if you are someone who prays. Um, if you're not, that's okay. But if you are someone who prays, um, definitely I recommend writing your prayers down in the same journal that you do your journal prompts in. So I do my journal prompts and then I write a prayer to God at the bottom. So definitely recommend that. Journal prompts, praying in your journals, whatever, any type of journaling, very important in growth and reevaluation. So yeah, that's definitely another thing that I um, do to progress my mental health. Uh, the next thing I would say spiritually, so this isn't going to apply to everybody. Oh, shoot, my camera's about to die. All right, so spiritual, spiritually, how I progress my mental health. Um, I spoke about it a little bit before with writing, praying to God, writing it down, things like that. But I feel like, is my camera focusing? Okay. But... In general, um, for me, this isn't going to apply to everybody because not everybody is religious. Not everybody believes in something, things like that. So if this applies to you, keep listening. If not, you can always fast forward. But I felt like I've been trying to connect with God more lately. As you can tell, I've been praying. Um, but I want to connect with him in different ways as like actually... Um, worshiping and going to Cody if you don't stop moving going to church services and things like that so I grew up going to church but the churches unfortunately that I went to weren't always the best experience so we always were jumping from church to church so it kind of dragged me a little bit away from religion as a whole um but lately I have the past few months or actually like almost a year now I have trying to connect more with God and 
um, connect more spiritual spirituality. And me, I am not a textbook. I wouldn't call myself a Christian. I would not even put that label to me yet. Um, maybe not even anytime soon. And I do also feel like when the time does come, I will not be that textbook Christian that you usually see. But I definitely believe in a lot that Christianity has to offer and um, brings forth to people. Um, and I wouldn't say that I never believe in these things. It was just like harder for me to. But these past couple of years have really shown me that the, one of the main things that's been pushing me is believing in a higher power, believing in God, believing in something, you know what I'm saying? So um, Christianity definitely have, I would say I've definitely, what's the word, uh, propelled or attracted myself to Christianity. Um, but I still wouldn't say that I'm a Christian yet. I still don't think I would be a textbook Christian, but I definitely want to experience it fully and see how my life will change by actually you know diving in experience it putting it like um involving it in my life and things like that and like i said this isn't going to apply to everybody but for those who do um have like the kind of the same experience as me i definitely say take that chance and um look into it i it indulge it in the way that you see fit and that's another thing like when it comes to religion um i feel like everybody kind of um puts it in their life in a different way lets it come into their life in a different way uh experience it in a different way so i say do that um don't let outside you know outside influences influence you to be a certain way do things a certain way do it how you see fit and that's the only way it will definitely it will for sure impact you in my opinion like i said this is my opinion this is my experience not putting this on anybody else and also not discrediting anybody who is like a textbook christian or anything like that um just this is my experience and this is what i've experienced so far and went through so um definitely spirituality is very important to me now um, especially with seeing how it's definitely impacted my life already. So I definitely say go for that as well if you want to help progress your mental health. Um, and th I would say those are the main things. There's obviously little things in between the lines like evaluating your life, um, doing things that make you happy, um, boundaries, things like that. Which I will talk about in other episodes. Right now I'm not going to get too deep into it. But we're going to read between the, we're going to talk about the things between the lines and for the episodes. But those are like the main things that I wanted to talk about that has definitely helped me to progress my mental health. So that's all I wanted to really give to y'all today in this um, episode. Uh, mental health, obviously, very important to me. Uh, this was just kind of like an overview of it. Uh, I will be getting way more deeper into it as the episodes progress. And, um, like I said, all these things are very important to think about why labels are okay, um, the different ways you can help progress your mental health, like just things like that. Like all of these things are very important to think about. And as episodes go further, we'll definitely be getting deeper. <laughs> My dog is here. <laughs> as episodes go further, we'll definitely get deeper into these topics and you know it's gonna get a little bit more juicier a little bit more interesting and personal so if you guys are excited for that just subscribe to my channel so that you can see the next episodes coming up and i'll see you guys next week